In our previous discussion, we focused on the following graph and we said that the graph describes how the rate of the enzyme in an enzyme catalyzed reaction changes when we change, when we increase the substrate concentration. So as we increase the substrate concentration, as we make the X value greater, we see that the Y value, the reaction velocity V naught, the rate at which the enzyme catalyzed the reaction basically increases and it follows the following blue curve. So initially at the beginning of that reaction, we have a relatively straight line, a straight slope, and then the slope begins to decrease and it levels off and eventually it begins to approach asymptotically the maximum velocity, the maximum rate of that enzyme's activity, this red horizontal line. And notice the blue curve is never going to pass that Vmax value. Now, we also were able to actually derive the equation, the mathematical expression that describes the blue curve, and this is known as the michaelis menten equation. And this is the michaelis menten equation. So this equation describes this blue curve here. So V naught is the Y coordinate, that's the velocity, the rate at which the enzyme catalyzes that reaction. And this is equal to the product of a constant Vmax, this y value here, multiplied by this ratio. The substrate concentration, the x value, divided by Km, the Michaelis constant, plus, once again, the x value, the substrate concentration. Now, what we want to explore in this lecture is the meaning behind this equation. What physiological meaning does this equation actually have? And does this equation correctly describe this blue curve? So this is what we basically want to answer in this question. Now, what we want to explore first is the meaning behind the Km term. So Km is known as the Michaelis constant. The question is, what is the physiological meaning of this Km value? Well, to answer this question, we're going to begin by making a simplification. And the reason we want to make the simplification is to basically figure out the meaning behind Km. Now, because Km appears in the denominator, we can see that the, con that the units of Km are the same as that for this, uh, the concentration of the substrate. And so what we're going to assume initially is we're going to set the Km value equal to the substrate concentration. And we'll see why we do that in just a moment. So if we set Km equal to the substrate concentration, then this denominator can be simplified from Km plus this to simply the concentration of S plus the concentration of S, where Km has been replaced with the concentration of S. <clears throat> so V naught is equal to V max multiplied by this ratio. Now the denominator can be combined to basically combine these two quantities. So it's, it, it's as if we have X plus X and that gives us 2X. So that means we have V max multiplied by the concentration of S divided by 2 multiplied by the concentration of S. And notice these two quantities can now be canceled out and we simply have V V naught is equal to V max divided by 2. And this is a very important physiological, it carries very important physiological meaning. What this tells us is, when the Michaelis constant is equal to the substrate concentration, that particular x value, we see that the rate of that enzyme, the velocity of that enzyme is exactly half of the maximum velocity of that enzyme. So if we look on the following y-axis, this is the maximum velocity, this is the zero velocity. So the velocity in the middle is the Vmax divided by 2. And if we draw that horizontal line, and when that line touches that curve, we then draw a vertical line down, that gives us the y-coordinate known as the Michaelis constant Km. So basically, the Michaelis constant Km describes the substrate concentration, the x value at which the rate, the velocity of that enzyme's activity is exactly half 
of its maximum velocity v max. So if km is equal to the substrate concentration, then v naught is equal to v max divided by two. So that's the meaning behind km. Km basically describes the situation when exactly half of all the active sites are filled with the substrate. And we'll talk much more about that in the next lecture. Now let's move on to two and three. In two and three, we're basically, uh, we basically want to show that this michaelis methan equation actually correctly describes this blue curve here. So let's begin by going to the beginning of that chemical reaction. So at the beginning of the chemical reaction, at a time of approximately zero, we know that the substrate concentration is very, very low. So the substrate concentration is somewhere around this value here at the beginning of that chemical reaction. Now, let's compare the substrate concentration at the beginning to the Km value. Clearly, the Km has a much higher value than the substrate concentration at the beginning. And so we're going to begin by making the following assumption. So when the time is approximately equal to zero at the beginning of that chemical reaction, the Km value is much greater than the concentration of that substrate. And so what that means is this sum, the Km value plus the substrate concentration is simply approximately equal to the Km value because this is much greater than this, this is approximately equal to zero compared to this, and so Km is approximately, e or, uh, Km plus the substrate concentration is approximately equal to Km. So this is approximately equal to zero. Now, the point of making this simplification was to basically simplify this equation because what we actually want to do in step two is, we actually want to describe the equation that describes how the curve behaves at the beginning of that particular reaction. So V naught is equal to V max multiplied by this ratio. And because our denominator is Km plus the substrate concentration, and as a result of this assumption, we see that our denominator simply becomes Km. So this is approximately equal to V max multiplied by the substrate concentration divided divided by Km. Now, instead of having the Km underneath this term, let's bring it underneath the Vmax term. And this is the equation that we have. And so this equation is the equation that describes the activity, the rate of that enzyme at the beginning of that chemical reaction. And notice what this equation actually looks like. So based on the curve here, we see that at the beginning of the reaction, the curve, so from about this point in time to let's say about this point in time, the curve looks like a straight line. And in fact, this equation also describes an equation that looks like a straight line. So remember, a straight line has the following general form. So y, the y coordinate is equal to m, the slope, multiplied by x, the x coordinate, plus b, the y intercept. Now, b in this particular case is zero, so this is zero and it cancels out. Now, m is the slope, that's v max divided by km, x is the substrate concentration, and y is simply the velocity, the rate of that enzyme. So we see that this equation correctly describes the behavior of the enzyme at the beginning of that reaction. Not only that, but this equation also describes a reaction that has first order. So remember, in our discussion on the rate law, we said that if the rate law looks like this, then our reaction is in fact a first order reaction, where V is the rate of that particular reaction, K is the rate constant, and this is the substrate concentration. And this coefficient, this exponent of one, basically describes a first order reaction. And this looks like this or this looks like this, where V is V naught, K is V max divided by Km, and this quantity is equal to this. So what that basically means is, 
at the beginning of that chemical reaction, we see that the rate, the velocity of that enzyme's activity is directly proportional to the substrate concentration. So that is what we mean by a first order reaction. So notice that this is a straight line and also a first order reaction. And this implies that the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the substrate concentration at the beginning of that chemical reaction. So this equation correctly describes the behavior at the beginning of that chemical reaction. Now, what about at the end of the chemical reaction? So in part two, we basically discussed when the substrate concentration was very low, but what if the substrate concentration is very high? Can this equation correctly describe the behavior of that particular enzyme? And this is what we do in part three. So we can also use the michaelis methan equation to describe the enzyme activity towards the end of that reaction. So when the substrate concentration is very, very high. So now we're basically going to use the same argument as in this case, but we're going to reverse because at the end of the reaction, so when we have a very, very high concentration of substrate, that means the Km value is much smaller than the substrate concentration. So for example, if we're somewhere here along the x-axis, this quantity, this concentration is much higher than Km. And so what that means is, towards the end, we see that the concentration of S is much, much higher than the value value of Km. And so by the same logic that we used here, the sum of Km and the substrate concentration is about equal to simply the substrate concentration. And so if we take this michaelis methan equation, it will simplify itself to this. So V naught is equal to V max divided by the ratio. The denominator is approximately equal to this. And now these two quantities cancel out and we simply see that V naught is equal to V max. So what that means is as we have, as we continually add concentration of, as we continually increase the concentration of S eventually, our V naught will be the V max. And once we reach the V max, it doesn't matter if we add more of that substrate, adding more substrate will not have any effect on the rate of that enzyme catalyzed reaction. And that can be seen from this equation. So V naught is equal to V max. V naught is equal to V max is an equation that describes a rate law that has a zeroth order. Remember, V is equal to K multiplied by the concentration to the zeroth power. This is a zeroth order chemical reaction. And so what that means is this will cancel out because anything to the zero is one. And so V equals K and V naught is V and V max is the K value. And what that means is by changing the concentration, the substrate, when we have a very high substrate concentration, that will not affect the rate of that enzyme catalyzed reaction. So once again, this tells us that the velocity approaches a maximum as the substrate concentration increases. And this describes a zeroth order reaction. This means that increasing the substrate concentration will not actually affect the rate of that chemical reaction when we're very far along the x-axis to the right. So this is the meaning of the Michaelis methan equation. And in the next lecture, we're going to discuss the meaning behind the Km value in much more detail.